There we go. Now I turn my camera around and we can get started. So, um, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute. So basically what you need is um, a painting board. This one is plastic. I prefer the plastic ones. There are wooden ones or particle board ones, uh, but those tend to warp. So I actually prefer the plastic. You can find some that are like nice recycled plastic from Europe. Um, I'm actually not sure where this one is from. I've had it for a really long time. So you need a painting board. You need some watercolor paper. I have some soaking, but um, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you a little bit about watercolor paper. Okay, it doesn't really look like much. It's watercolor paper. Watercolor paper comes in different weights. Um, the, the standard the standard weights, um, and the weight is like how thick it is. The, it comes in 90 weight, 140, 300, and 400. And you want to use um, the 140 weight is really good. The lightest paper, I've used it sometimes when we were trying to save money at school, we would use the cheaper um, paper. And it bubbles and curls and if the children like really scrub it with their brushes as the little ones will do often and sometimes the older ones but the little ones really tend to do that it gets all like pilly and so it's just not it's just not very nice so i would encourage you to get the 140 weight paper and um oh and i also wanted to tell you that when you buy watercolor paper, it comes in hot press and cold press. So you can think of it. This took me a really long time to figure out, but the hot press is smooth, just like if you press something with a hot iron and the cold press is more, more bumpy, more textured. So um, I, we like to use the cold press. Um, you can have, you can paint in different sizes. The size of my painting today is about 10 by 13 inches. Um, you could do it a little bigger depending on how big your board is. This is kind of a small board, so that's what that's what I'm going to do. And then, of course, you need a brush. So one with a nice, um, one that's made for watercolor. And um, I was already working with this, so the ends are a little flunky right now. But a nice wide brush is nice with a long handle. Makes it easier for the children to, to hold and to work with. Um, yeah, and it's with with this watercolor painting. It's really worth investing in good tools and good paints. So the paints that we've always used in um, at the Waldorf schools where I've been is the Stockmar watercolor paint. And for early childhood, you just need three colors. So this is ultra ultra marine blue and carmine red. And then I actually grabbed the wrong bottle from school. I borrowed these from school. Uh, this is the, the gold yellow, but the lemon yellow mixes better with, with the colors if you're going to do three colors at once. So this stuff, this paint, this stock mark paint is kind of expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to show you how we mix it. So you would never, here I did this with, I mixed up the red ahead of time. We would never use the paint just like straight from the jar. This is what it looks like. <laughs> the red kind of looks like dried blood, doesn't it? So this, so then I, tr I tried, because I don't usually measure it, but I thought since I'm demonstrating it, it would be helpful to have some um, sense of what, it, you know, what the measurements are. So this, this next one, whoop, is um, one teaspoon of the Carmen red paint with a half cup of water. And then I just did a little sample there. And um, this is uh, a teaspoon of the paint with one cup of water. So this I think I would use, I could even dilute it a little more, but I wanted the colors bright. Um, so as you can see, a little bit goes a long way. So I have a whole cup, I have a whole cup of paint. It's in this jar and uh, we'll pro I'll probably just use like a couple tablespoons of it today, so you, it'll last. It'll last for a while. You can get this is the big. So this is a size jars, 250 milliliters. This is the size that we get for school. Um, you can get them as small as 20 milliliters, which is what I have at home when my girls were little, and um, it really even that little bit 
less for a long time. So um, I, I would recommend this, but if you don't want to use it, you can you can buy um, these watercolors. Like it doesn't have to be this brand, but watercolors in a tube. Um, I have never tried them, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. These are ones that I use for my other painting. I, again, I would just encourage you to get three, just the three um, primary colors, although I'm not sure which ones would mix the best, but I would, but you could just experiment with it a little bit. Um, because even though blue and yellow makes green, sometimes with paint, it doesn't always work quite so well. So I'm going to oh, move that out of the way. Um, and I just was going to show you this. This is a cut up painting. I use the paintings for a lot of things, but um, this is this is part of a <laughs> part of a painting that's just painted with blue. And um, at the start of the school year or um, just at various times in the year, we'll, we will just paint with one color. And as you can see, it's beautiful. Just the one color, just the one color painted is beautiful. I'm not sure if this is one that I did or one that one of the children did. Um, I always save the ones that don't get taken home to, um, to use for various things. So let's mix up some paint. So I'm going to do the blue one the same way. I have my spoon. I have the paint and, oops, <laughs> I can't get that in there. All right, I'm going to do it this way. I also have some chopsticks. I'm going to pull one out. I'm going to use that to pour some paint. So it's going to fall. That's okay. If it falls, I think it'll fall into the jar. So this is okay. So that's about, that's about a teaspoon. I'm going to grab, I'm putting that lid back on. I'm going to grab my water. I measured, oops, that's not quite half a cup. I'm going to pour a little more in there. There we go. All right, so, um, yeah, and you don't have to measure it. Like I said, I usually don't, but just, just you know, for since we're learning how to do this, I thought I would try it and see how it goes. Um, I usually like to stir with the with with a stick like this, a chopstick, but I'm actually it's hard to get all the paint as you can see. It's hard to get all that paint off. It's really thick and sticky. Um, so I'm going to use a brush to get the paint off of here, or at least most of it. There we go. I'm gonna toss this into the sink. Wonk. and I'm going to test it. It's nice to have a little scrap of watercolor paper for test to test your colors. So, um, wow, that actually looks pretty good. So I guess it depends on the color. I'm gonna stir it some more to make sure I got everything all mixed up from the bottom there. Because it is so sticky. It just takes a while to mix. Um, yeah, there's still some stuff there on the bottom, it looks like. I'm going to mix it a little more and try it again. And again, this is just, you know, this is your preference. I, I like the colors. Some people like them lighter. I like them a little bit stronger, but I think this blue will be fine. So, um of my water jar here. Can you see that? Yes. I'm going to rinse off my brush. So now I have my blue and I have my red and my yellow also is already, although I'm going to just use two colors to show you today. And so this is my, this is my, like, this is my batch that I will 
cover and put, put in the refrigerator, whatever I don't use. Um, it's a good idea to have a rag handy or several. So I'm just going to pour enough paint. Yeah, that's plenty. Pour enough paint in there to kind of cover the bottom and set this aside. So I prefer to use like smaller jars, baby food jars. You can also buy like really nice sets of water, like a, like a wooden stand with three jars that you can put in um, so it's a little more stable. You wanna use a wide bottom jar even though you're not using much paint. So I, those are my paints all ready to go. I'm gonna set these other ones aside and all of my lids. Now my paper is soaking, let's see. You can soak it in the sink or you can soak it, I'm just gonna move all this stuff out of the way so I can slide this over. You can uh, soak it, I have it just soaking in a clean roasting pan. You, in, uh, it's in, I'm just checking to see if I have paint on my hands. It's, I usually soak it in like room temperature or lukewarm water. Cold is fine. Um, it's just that since you're sticking your hands in it, I prefer to do it in uh, something that's not quite so cold. So you want it to soak for around 10 minutes. If it's a little less or a little more, that's fine, not too much more. But that just that gets it all, all nice and soft and ready to go. So if you can tell, sometimes I can, I can and sometimes I can't. Oops, <laughs> look, I have paint on my fingers. I'm gonna put that side down. You put the smoother side down and put it right, lay it flat right on the board. And then you would, you'll wanna have a sponge. This is, um, this is a scrubby sponge, but I'm just gonna use the, the sponge side. And you want a clean sponge. I have a, so you won't use this sponge to wipe up spills. This is just to, flat, to flatten out the painting so it will stick to the board and if there's any bubbles then they will um they'll get wiped out so there we go the painting is all ready to go um i'm gonna clear my space a little bit so i am ready i'm gonna use this nice big brush and for each child and for you as well you will want to have the board, the paper, the paint that you're going to use, and that's it. Some people put like a little rag or a, a, a painting cloth or a brush uh, or, a, or a little washcloth next to the um, next next to the paper for the paint the paintbrush to rest on I like to keep it really simple so I will have my paint and my water jar and this and I always I don't hand out the brushes to the children until we're actually ready to paint I usually have mine first and when everything and we set everything up ahead of time um, so when we're ready to paint we're ready to paint and when I start I like to sing a song, which I will sing for you in a moment. You can also tell a little story, and it kind of depends on what age of child you're working with. Um, if they're if they're littles, like one and a half to three, I would just sing the song and start painting. If if I have an older group, I would probably tell a little bit of a story. And just so you know, like if you're painting with the littles, when I did it in my parent child class. They would basically just paint with whatever colors they had. They would paint until all the paint was gone. So if you use three colors, it'll, you'll just have brown mud. And it's a good thing. Because I know I, that uh, parents sometimes didn't like that, but it's all about process. It's not about the finished product. And the children will be really happy with that. As they get older, they'll, they'll want to keep the colors separate more or mix them more um, purposefully. And as they get older, like towards the end of kindergarten or maybe even early, a little earlier, they'll start to make pictures out of them. But when I'm doing it, I just um, I just paint and I just 
the idea is just to enjoy the flow of the colors and not to try and shape anything. So I would really encourage you to just do that and just let, just let the colors flow. Um, and it's kind of a meditative experience. So after I sing my song, I will be quiet. If one of the children asks me something, I'll answer as, as briefly as I can. You know, sometimes they say, oh, look, it looks like this, or look, I made purple or whatever. And I'll just look at them and not acknowledge them and smile and nod or say, mm-hmm, or wow, I see. Um, so I don't expect the children to be quiet, but they learn over time from my quiet to be quiet when we do this. And, we, and, and it just can be so lovely. You would be amazed to see a group of like 18 three to five year olds quietly painting while so close together. It didn't happen all the time, but there were moments when it did and it just was so lovely. Everybody just all engrossed in their colors and their paints. So let's get started. My lovely rainbow, see it spin, so lovely shine. So this is where I would just start painting quietly, but I'm just going to say a few more things before I do that. So you, as the as the adult, you're setting an example for the children. So I always start my painting by dipping my brush in the water and wiping it off on the edge. And then choose whichever color you like and watch. And just enjoy the movement of it. And carefully and consciously rinse between colors. And I don't correct the children unless if they start some like once in a while, somebody will start pouring the paint. And if they do, I'll probably just say, let's, let's use our brushes for painting or some other such clever thing. Um, and if they won't, I'll just take the jar away. And if they're ready to paint, paint without pouring, then I'll give it back to them. And if not, then they may just, just be done. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with pouring. It's just not, it's not what we're doing. And of course, depending on the age of the child, I will, you know, if it's a really little one, I might just let them do it one time, but I prefer to not. And I, you know, they'll, they'll eventually learn by our example. So as you're painting, just enjoy the colors, the movement of colors. Just do it kind of intuitively, watch them flow. So when I paint with my classes, I, I tend to go through the colors according to the season of the year. So 
and when we first would come back to school, it would still feel pretty much like summer. So I would start just with gold or yellow with the yellow, the sun, the yellow sunshine. If I was telling a story, I would tell a little story about rainbow land and the yellow sunshine. Then I would move on to red as we go into fall and then we get to Thanksgiving or maybe even earlier for Halloween, we would do yellow and red, which we know what that makes. And then as we enter into the holidays, I would go back to just blue. It's so soothing and quiet. And we would do just blue for a while. Um, sometimes we use the Um, paintings to make other things. Some years I used it to make lanterns for our lantern walk, or we'd make it into cards or baskets or um, frames for other pictures or covers for books. Um, so, yeah, so that's, so you do this consciously and carefully, but know that your the children if they're littler, they're, your, the colors are going to end up muddied and um, you probably won't be able to reuse them, which is why we don't use it for, directly from the big jar. And you can see, I mean, my, I've been painting for a while and I still have a fair amount left in my jars. So if it's clean when we're done, if it's not mixed, I'll pour it back into the big jar. If it's mixed together, I just um, dump it. And the children sometimes notice, look at how my, my water has turned a lovely purple. Um, yeah, and you can see, like, I think because the, I'm painting on wet paper, the colors that look a little lighter than they did um, on the plain paper, and that's okay. I try to remember after I have paint all over the paper to rinse my brush every time, even if I'm just dipping it back into the same color that I painted with. Again, you know, if you don't, then it'll just mix together and it doesn't really matter. So I don't usually have, I don't have like an ending song or anything that I use. I paint until I'm done. And if I in the classroom, when the, um, when the child is done, dep it depends on their age, of course. I'll do different things depending on how old they are. If I need to write a name, I can um, either scratch it into the corner like that, Susan, or you could have a little symbol. Of course, if it's at home and you're just there's just. Not too many of you, you don't really need to do that, but you can if you want to. Also, sometimes I've, I've used a pencil to write their names on it in the corner. And then if the children are old enough, I'll have them carry their their jars to, the, um, to wherever we're cleaning up. And um, they, they, usually, they get to, I will, I empty the paint into wherever it needs to go, but They'll help with the washing of the jars. Um, make me I, When I am done with my painting, I rinse my brush in the water, we'll wash it again, and I just put it down and let it rest. And I encourage the children to do that. It's better to not leave the brush sitting in the water. Uh, it'll just, it'll ruin the brush. The, the ferrule, this thing, this metal part will get loose or maybe rusty, depending on what kind of metal it's made out of. Um, so when you're done, leave, leave the painting on the board until it's dry. Find a place to put it out of the way so um, it, it can dry, but you don't want to take it off now. Um, and let's see. And wash the, wash the brushes with, you can wash them with a little soap. I usually um, put a little soap in my hand and do this and then rinse them under the water and then do oops, <laughs> and just then like straighten it out. And then I have a jar, I don't have it here, but I have a jar, so I store them this way. And 
that's it. Hi, just a quick little addendum. I wanted to show you my finished painting. Oops, I guess it goes that way. My name's on the bottom. Uh, I have no idea why it did this around the edges, but it always does something different. Um, and this, but this is what it looks like when it's all dried. And I also just wanted to mention to you really quick that when you're, before you paint again on your painting board, you want to wash it off with some water, maybe a little uh, soap if you need it, but some warm water might just be enough to get this, the paint off before you paint again. And I wanted to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you will give it a try. It's so much fun to do with your children or to just even do by yourself. If, if you want to see how it goes, um, if you if you enjoyed this, please like it and also please subscribe to my channel if you're interested. I will leave all the information about the paints and everything in the description below, and also I will share information about my do-it-yourself parent-child class, which has lots of songs and verses and stories and crafts for you to share with your child. So you can try it out free for a week if you'd like. I hope you will enjoy it. And thank you so much for listening. So long.